All right, today we're covering section 7.2, trig integrals. Uh, I think section 7.2 is pretty accessible. I think maybe seven, maybe some of you guys will have problems with 7.3, but 7.2, don't freak out just because there's trig stuff involved. It's all basically gonna boil down to some basic trig identities and U substitution. So we're actually not really learning too much uh, like revolutionary material here. It's really just uh, some tricks, you know, so pretty uh, straightforward stuff. Okay, so formulas we need to know uh, for this section, the, the very standard, this one sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Hopefully all you guys know that. Maybe lesser known, but still necessary for this section is one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Okay, and then we have these, uh, I always forget if they're, I think they're double angle identities. I always forget if it's double angle or half angle. But we need to know that cosine squared equals one half times one plus cosine two x, and sine squared equals one half one minus cosine two x. And then this one, this, uh, this identity here, eh, I just put it down here. Um, this sine, sine of two x equals two sine of x cosine of x. I just put that there uh, for kind of completeness. I, I think it'll be more important in the next section, 7.3, maybe not so important uh, in this section. And then we should also know some basic trig stuff like tangent equals sine over cosine, secant equals one over cosine, you know, cosecant equals one over sine, that kind of thing, all right? So trig integrals, what are we talking about? We're talking about integrals of trig functions. So we might see something like the integral of sine squared of x dx and uh, integral of sine of x times cosine squared or integral of tangent squared secant squared. So those, those types of things. So pretty much everything we're gonna see today is gonna be like one trig function times another and maybe raised to some powers, okay? All right, so the good news is it's basically all just U sub and formula, the formulas identities that we just saw, okay? So like I said, it's not anything revolutionary. It's just gonna, I'm just gonna show you some tricks to apply these things. No real bad news. Scrolling past that. Okay, so let's look at, uh, an easy example. This is before we even start talking about U sub. This is just going to be relying on these identities that we just saw, the uh, double angle identity. I'll call it that and stick with that for the remainder of the video. Um, so integral cosine squared. Uh, if I tried to do a U substitution, there wouldn't really work. That wouldn't really work, right? Because if I did a U substitution, well, the only possibility would be like U equals cosine of X, right? But then that would introduce this du equals you know, sine of x, and then I'd, I'm introducing a sine of x, um, I'm be dividing by sine of x somewhere in there, right? So there's no sine of x's that are gonna get canceled out. So I don't wanna use a u sub. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this uh, double angle identity we just saw, okay? Cosine squared is equal to one half one plus cosine, 2x. Okay, and now this should be something I can integrate. I can pull the one half outside if I want. Okay, and then I can integrate the one. And can I integrate cosine 2x? Yeah, that's cosine 2x. I, I can use a u substitution on that, and it's pretty straightforward. You would just you do u equals 2x, right? And I, was, I would suggest doing uh, several of the trig integrals like cosine of 2x, cosine 4x, and one and sine, you know, even the sines and things like that, sine of 6x. So once you do enough of these, you start, you know, seeing, you just can see the pattern, know how to do them. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you kind of figure that out on your own. Uh, it's just a you know, U substitution, but once you've done it enough times, you don't even really need to do the U substitution. 
when I look at this, I know, okay, integral of one is x, integral of that cosine of two x, well, that's just gonna be sine two x over two, okay? Then I got my plus c, my constant of integration, and then I could distribute my one half. So this would be my antiderivative, okay? So once again, integral cosine squared of x, you get this thing. All right, so a fairly easy case. All we need to do, all we needed to do was apply one of these identities, all right? So nothing super crazy. So now let's start working with combinations of these sines and cosines. And we'll talk about tangents and secants later. But I think once we see the stuff, the rules for sines and cosines, we will have a much easier time uh, doing the tangents and secants. So uh, there's a lot of possibilities for an integral, like let's do a new page real quick. So we're gonna see how to deal with co all these combinations of this form where I have sine to the power m, cosine to the power n. Okay, so where m and n are just integers. Okay, so like maybe m is seven and n is 43. And, okay, we're gonna learn how to deal with all these cases and the only thing that really matters is what these numbers are, okay? So we're gonna kind of build up slowly. Not, not too slow, it's gonna go pretty quick, I think. So the easiest case, the easiest two cases to do are when we have like, let's say, let's say we have sine of m and then we just have a single power of cosine, okay? So m, m can be anything, okay? Any integer, we'll, we'll stick with integers for now. So let's say m is any integer. And uh, this, this integral here is gonna be pretty easy to do, sine of m, cosine of x, excuse me, sine uh, of x to the power m times cosine of x. And same thing with this integral here, this cosine to the power m times sine, that's gonna be pretty easy to do, okay? So when I have uh, these combinations of sine, cosine, and then I just have, let's say I have sine, let's stick with this integral for a minute. Let's say I have sine to an m and then just cosine. I have just a single power of cosine. I'm just gonna do a u substitution, u equals sine, okay? And then, uh, once I do that substitution, uh, what's going to get canceled? When I do my du, uh, I'm going to get a cosine term in my du. And so this single power of cosine is just going to get canceled out completely. Okay. So that cosine is going to cancel. Okay. So let's see an example. Let's say we had sine to the power of five times cosine of x. All right. So I just have a single power of cosine. So I'm just gonna do a u substitution for u equals sine. And then as I said, our du would be cosine dx. And then remember my little trick that I showed you guys that we say, okay, du over cosine x equals dx, okay? So now I sub this in for sine of x and I sub this in for dx, all right? So my integral just becomes u to the fifth du. And then that's a really easy integral, right? It's u to the six over six plus c. And then once I have that antiderivative, I can undo my substitution to get sine of, uh, of x to the power six over six plus c. So we're seeing that uh, if I have this integral, it's really easy. It's, it's just uh, a straight u substitution, u equals sine, and then that cosine is gonna get canceled. Same thing with this second integral. It's just instead of in this second integral here, instead of doing u equals sine, I would just do the opposite. I would do u equals cosine. Okay, and we see that here. Let's say I have cosine to the power four times sine of x dx. I do a u uh, substitution for u equals cosine, then du is negative sine dx. And so I would have, after my u substitution, I would have negative, okay, I'm gonna bring that negative sign outside. I have negative integral u to the four, u to the power four du, okay? And I integrate to get u to the power five over five plus c. 
and then I just undo my substitution. All right, so we see that these cases, just I want to reiterate here, these cases where we have like sine and then one power of cosine, that's easy. And then also easy is this cosine, you know, powers of cosine, and I have one power of sine. So those are my easy cases. And then the rest of the tricks for this section are kind of taking a problem and transforming it into one of those easy problems. Okay, so that's what I've stated here. And most of these other situations we're gonna see, we're gonna try and use some of our identities that I had up at the top of uh, the lecture that um, we're gonna use some of those identities to transform into one of these situations where we only have one sine or one cosine. Okay, so let's first get a little practice transforming sine and powers of sine into cosines and so on. Okay, we, uh, to, to end up with just a single power of sine or single power of cosine. Uh, if, if we're not in that situation at the start, we wanna get there. So how do we change sines to cosines and so on? Okay. Well, it's all based on this identity that uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Okay, so look at, uh, look at these steps here. Okay, I, I'm starting with sine to the power four. Okay, well that's, uh, I could write that as sine squared to the power two, right? So I just uh, have rewritten that like here. And then inside my parentheses, that's sine squared. What do I know about sine squared? Okay, let's go to a new page real quick. Well, if uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, then it must be that one minus cosine squared equals sine squared, right? So if I have sine squared squared, that's the same thing as one minus cosine squared, squared, right? So that's what I've done here, okay? We started with sine to the power four. I rewrote that as sine squared squared. And then that sine squared in parentheses, I'm gonna rewrite as one minus cosine squared. And then I could just square that out. I could actually multiply that stuff out and kind of write it in this long form like so. And we could do the same thing for cosine, right? If I had cosine to the fourth, I could have changed it into an expression of sines. Okay. How does this help? Okay. This is gonna be very handy when we have uh, more complicated situations of uh, integrals. So let's start with sine to the fifth, okay? Uh, we couldn't do the double angle identity because uh, for that we would need an even power here. So we have an odd power of sine. So we couldn't do a double angle identity. So what do we do? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split off one of these signs. Okay, so I'm gonna write sine to the fifth as sine to the fourth times sine. There's nothing wrong with that. And then these signs, this even power of sine, I'm gonna transform all of those into cosines. Okay. Uh, just using the same exact method I just used in the previous example. Okay. So sine to the fourth equals sine squared squared. Okay. And then in parentheses, let's rewrite that sine squared as one minus cosine squared. And we don't need to multiply it out actually. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Now, how does this help? Now I can do a U substitution and make things a lot easier for myself, okay? So I have one sine and then everything else is, you know, in terms of cosines, right? So if I do U equals cosine, okay? If I do U equals cosine, these are all gonna change to U's Okay, so I'm gonna have like one minus u squared squared. And then this sign should be canceled out by my du. Okay, so after I make my substitution, Uh, 
Okay, I got a negative sign here I can pull out of my integral. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and pull that out now. All right, so after I do my u substitution, I just have this integral. Okay, and that's an integral I can solve uh, quite easily. Okay, and maybe now I'll go ahead and multiply all this stuff out. So one minus u squared squared, that would be one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth. Okay, and then I could integrate this easily. And I get this antiderivative. And then my last step would just be undoing my substitution, right? And what was my original substitution? U equals cosine. And that would be my final answer. So even in this uh, um, case where we had sine to the power of five, what I was trying to do is I'm just trying to get into the situation where I have, like I got cosines to a power M and then I have a single power of sine, okay? Or the opposite, you know, I could also look for a situation where I have sine to the M and a single power of cosine. So that's what allowed me to solve this integral. It's getting, uh, getting my original integral into one of these formats. In our case, it was this one, okay. And uh, it doesn't matter if we uh, now, let's see. So in the previous example, we just had sine to the power of five, right? Yeah, we can do the same trick if we have sine to the power of five times cosine squared or any other power of cosine, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same trick where I'm gonna have, sine, I'm gonna rewrite sine to the power of five as sine to the power of four times sine. Okay. Uh, I wanna still turn these into cosines, right? And then I'm gonna make a U substitution and hopefully this is gonna get canceled out. And let's see how that progresses. So again, I'm gonna write sine to the fourth as one minus cosine squared squared. And then I'll switch the order of this cosine squared and sine of X, okay. Now I'm gonna do a U substitution, U equals cosine. The only difference uh, with the previous problem is I'm gonna have some more u's coming from this cosine squared here. Okay, so after I make my u substitution, I have, let's see, one minus u squared, squared times u squared, and then I'm gonna have a negative sign out front, du. So that should be my integral. And again, I can just multiply this out and then multiply that expression by u squared and it should still be easy to integrate. Okay, so I won't progress any farther with that one. You guys can solve the rest of that out if you like. So let's uh, write out some nice guidelines for our integrals, okay? So I kind of maybe gave you some intuition that we basically want to get uh, if, we, if we have sine times cosine with powers, we basically want to try and work until we get like one sine by itself and then everything else uh, as cosines or vice versa. Okay, so I'll give you some clear guidelines where you don't have to stare at it and figure it out. Okay, I'll give you some clear guidelines that'll help you uh, do exactly that. <clears throat> so let's say we have an integral sine to the power m times cosine to the power n, okay? And then we have uh, a couple cases. So if n is odd, so if the power of cosine is odd, we're gonna pull off one cosine and leave it by itself. And then we're gonna change the rest of those cosines into sines, 
Okay. So an example of that would be, let's say I had sine to the power four and cosine to the power five. So I got an odd power of cosine. All right, I'm gonna strip off one of those cosines, meaning I'm gonna write cosine to the five as cosine four times cosine of x. That's what I mean by you know, stripping off a cosine or pulling off a cosine. All right, and then I'm gonna change these cosines into sines. And that would be, let's see, one minus sine squared of x squared cosine. And then we're gonna make, let's see, I have every, all of this is now in terms of sines. If I do a u equals sine, then this cosine is gonna get canceled when I do my du, right? Okay, so that's what I mean uh, when I'm giving you these steps. Pull off one cosine and change the rest of sines. Okay. On the other hand, if m, the power of sine, is odd, we're going to pull off one of those sines and then change the rest of the sines into cosines. So same exact thing, but now we're changing, uh, we're changing all our sines into cosines. And then our u substitution would be u equals cosine of x. What if they're both odd, right? So there's nothing uh, to maybe there's nothing against uh, having both of these odd, be odd. Maybe I have sine to the power five and cosine to the power seven. What do I do then? Well, then I could do it either way. I could do it either way I wanted. There's nothing wrong with doing it either way. What if they're both even though, right? So all, all the previous three steps, we kind of needed at least one of them to be odd. Okay, so what if they're both even? Well, if they're both even, we can't use this trick. We just have to use the double angle identities. Okay, and I believe I have an example here. So if I had an integral sine squared of x times cosine squared of x, I couldn't use this trick I've just shown you. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm just gonna have to write everything, uh, rewrite the sine squared of x using the double angle identity, and same thing with cosine squared of x. Okay. So remember from the top of our lecture page that uh, sine squared is equal to this. That's our double angle identity for sine squared. And then cosine squared is equal to this. All right, so once I get this, uh, I can multiply it all out and it's gonna be, this is gonna require some steps, but it, it's not too bad and uh, it shouldn't even really require any nasty U substitutions. We're just gonna have to use the double angle identity a couple times, all right? So let's see, we've, we've used it here and here, and we're actually gonna have to use it one more time. But uh, first, the first thing we would do would be, we would multiply all this stuff out. So first I'll pull out the one half from here and the one half from here. I'm gonna pull those and write them as one fourth out front. And then I got one minus cosine two x times one plus cosine two x. Okay. Well, if you know the, if you know the idea that a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b. Maybe you can see how this stuff multiplies immediately. If not, you know, I'll let you guys kind of multiply it out on your own and you should see, I'll kind of write out the answer. It sh you should get one minus cosine squared of two x. Okay, that's fine. But now I have a cosine squared again, right? And we've already kind of discussed that, okay, I can't really integrate cosine squared. What, what did I do when I had cosine squared before? I used the double angle identity, all right? So I'm gonna use the double angle identity again on this, okay? So my integral becomes one quarter, one minus one half times one plus, 
okay, I'm doubling the angle. When I go from cosine, when I use the double angle identity, I double the angle of whatever's in here. So I'm starting with 2x, so now I should go to 4x, okay? So my integral is equal to this. And then once I uh, distribute everything and kind of simplify this integral, something I can easily solve. See, I got one minus one half minus one half cosine four x dx. All right, now there's nothing that's going to give me a problem in this integral. Okay, you might be asking, how do I how do I do this cosine of four x? Well. That's a simple U substitution, or if you kind of learned that pattern like I was talking about earlier, you might be able to do it without writing out the U sub. Okay, so I'll write this as, all right, one minus one half, that's just one half. Okay, so this is the thing I'm integrating. Okay, one half becomes one half x. One half cosine four x becomes, uh, let's see, one over eight sine four x, I believe. And then I got my plus c. And then, you know, we could multiply this one fourth out to both of these terms. I'll let you guys simplify the rest. So that's how we deal with cases when both of these powers are even. It's kind of a pain in the butt, um, but it's not too common, okay? So I wouldn't, you know, I'm sure you'll see it on the homework at least once, but you probably won't see it a lot on tests or quizzes or anything. Still gotta know it though. All right, so those guidelines are, those are all the guidelines we need for solving uh, integrals of sine and cosine. Let's go back up to those guidelines for a second. So we talked about, okay, case one, if the power of cosine's odd, and then we got case two, if the power of sine's odd, what if they're both odd, what if they're both even? That kind of covers all bases, right? And now that we've kind of uh, seen how to deal with sine and cosine, we can really uh, extend this to tangent and secant pretty easily. It's the, this very similar logic, just with slightly different tricks, all right? So <clears throat> note, uh, note that, forget about this page for a second, let's go to a new page. So these guidelines we use for sine and cosine, right? We, we tried to get one sine by itself and everything, else in terms of cosine, for instance. So that was one example of what we might do. And then we were doing, u equal, in this case, we do like u equals cosine, right? And then we were relying on the fact that if we do this u substitution, this sine's gonna get canceled out, right? Because sine is basically the derivative of, let's see, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? So this sine's gonna get canceled out because when we kind of differentiate to do our, to figure out what our u sub is, you know, we would do du equals negative sine of x. That's where this cancellation is coming from. The fact that the derivative of cosine equals sine. All right. In uh, the same vein, okay, if I'm dealing with tangent and secant, okay, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, okay? And the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. So that means uh, if, let's say, I have an integral, I'll do it easy, try and think of an easy one real quick. Let's say I had a, okay, let's say I had tangent times secant to the fourth, okay. Uh, instead of stripping off, let's say I wanted to, you know, strip off a secant and write everything in terms of tangent. Well, I need a secant squared to get canceled because that's what, what's going to get canceled from like my u substitution u equals tangent. Okay, so instead of stripping off just like one secant by itself, I'm going to strip off two. 
Okay, and then I'll kind of rewrite, rewrite secant to the power four as secant squared times secant squared. And now I can rewrite secant squared as tangent, right? That's one plus tangent squared. So now I have tangent times tangent squared, secant squared. And then if I did a u substitution, u equals tangent, well now this secant squared is gonna get canceled out after I make my u substitution. So similar logic, just with uh, kind of slightly different cancellations, right? So let's just go straight to the steps. I think maybe the logic is clear, hopefully after kind of working with the sines and cosines a little bit. So let's look at the integral of tangent to the power m and secant to the power n. So if n is even, if the power of secant is even, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna pull off a secant squared and then change the rest of my secants into tangents, okay? And then I'll make the u, sub, the u substitution u equals tangent, okay? And then that secant squared that I pulled off is gonna um, get canceled out. If m, the power of tangent, is odd, we're gonna pull off one tangent and one secant, and then we're gonna change all of our tangents into secants, okay? So what I mean is, let's see, okay, if m is odd, so let's say I had tangent to the fifth, okay, secant to the third, for instance. Okay, okay so now this is that case where this, this power of tangents odd, okay? So my guideline says I should strip off one of these tangents and one of the secants as well. So I'm gonna start by doing that. Okay, and then I get this integral. And let's just kind of reorder stuff. I'll write tangent of the fourth x, secant squared x. And then back here I have secant x, tangent x. And now my guideline said that I should change all of these tangents into secants. Okay, well, tangent of the fourth, that's tangent squared squared which would be secant squared minus one squared times secant squared. And then I got secant x tan x. And now let's try the u substitution u equals secant, okay? Then du equals secant times tangent dx. So I'm gonna end up with the integral u squared minus one squared u squared du and then maybe it's maybe you can see that okay if i multiply all this out i'm still just going to have a polynomial and then even if i multiply all this out i'm still just going to have a polynomial and i can integrate polynomials easily so this is something i can integrate easily after i've made these substitutions all right so we've seen two cases we've seen if n, the power of secant, is even, we have case one. If m, the power of tangent, is odd, we have case two. All right, what if m is odd and n is even? Well, in, again, we can do it either way, okay? If so, again, if I had, uh, if this is an odd number and that's an even number, I could do either step, I could either do case one or case two. I, I can choose what, whichever I prefer. Uh, for anything else, we're gonna have to use identities and some trig definitions, okay? So we've already kind of seen a couple quick examples of how these secant tangent integrals work uh, for cases like one and two. Uh, I'll show you a case four real quick. One of, one of these things that doesn't fit into any of these uh, cases. Okay, so let's look at the integral of tangent times cosine. Okay, so now we don't even have tangent times secant. All right, now we got something else. So this is another case where, okay, we, we looked at sine and cosine and we looked at secant and tangent. Now I got kind of a mixture. Okay, so what do I do in cases like that? Well, I have to play around with the stuff inside the integral using identities and definitions. 
and then maybe I can transform this integral into, you know, maybe I can transform it into sine, cosine, you know, sine to the m power, cosine to the power n. Maybe I can transform this integral into that using some definitions, things like that. Okay, so let's see how I'd approach this. Well, I know tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So I'll just go ahead and rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. And then I have cosine squared here. Well, I got cosine squared over cosine. Okay, so I can cancel one of those cosines on top and rewrite this as sine of x times cosine of x. And now, yeah, I do have one of those cases, those easy cases that we dealt with before. Now I have an odd power here, just power one, power one. So this is one of those ones I could do either way. I could do u equals sine and solve my integral, or I could do u equals cosine and solve my integral. And maybe the answer, like I could do this either way and maybe the answers would look different, but they would be the same if I just uh, used a, a trig identity. Okay. All right. So that covers the lecture material. Like I said, no real revolutionary topics in here, just, just some tricks. And uh, to see more applications of these tricks, more examples of me solving problems, I will po post a problem video in the next couple days.